Welcome to the Healthy and Wealthy and Wise podcast with global sales trainer and professional speaker, Lois Kofi. Each week, it is her goal to share inspiration and education for you to be, do, have the best health and wealth and wisdom for your life. Well, all right, all right, all right, and happy Friday, guys. It's that time again for, if you're tuning in live, we are here inside of my Healthy and Wealthy and Wise Facebook communities and fan page. Super excited and fired up for our amazing, amazing guest today. It's going to be a, a powerful show because Seth Green is a seasoned, seasoned veteran of podcasting and a lot of success. So I'm super excited for him to bring his wisdom Today, if this is your first time ever tuning in, um, just want to let you know the show is designed for you to be an inspiration, hearing from the best health experts, the best wealth experts, and a lot of innate wisdom um, that people bring to the table from their amazing careers. If you, you know the drill, if you've been here before, go ahead and comment below where you're tuning in from. Um, you'll have an opportunity later to also, if you want to, ask questions of our guests. And if you see value today, like we do week after week, please hit the share button so that other people um, can experience this amazing message today. So I'm just going to dive right in because I know our guest um, has amazing uh, content to share, amazing wisdom. I met Seth through my mastermind group this year. Uh, he's actually the nation's foremost authority on how to grow your business with a cult of 50 evangelists promoting your business every week. He's also, this is really cool, mind-blowing, he's the co-host of the Sharkpreneur podcast with Shark Tank's Kevin Harrington. So if you have an opportunity, please go and check out his podcast. He's also an eight-time best-selling author. But I really just want you to go ahead and take take it from here, uh, Seth, and share your story. You know, how did you grow to be such an amazing businessman? Wow! Thank you so much. Thanks for the awesome introduction. Uh, it's an mm -hmm. honor to be here. I love watching your show, so I'm super excited to be a part of the community. I'm not sure how long a version of my story you want. I'll try and do a really <laughs> short version. Um, my father drove me nuts every semester of undergrad saying he couldn't afford Syracuse University. So by the time I graduated, I decided to chuck my dreams of being a Broadway star and go become a college financial aid planner. In the Fortune 500 company I worked for, the branch manager I worked for told me to interrupt 300 strangers a day, cold calling them, asking for money. This was before the internet many decades ago, and I hated cold calling all day long. Um, I had the good fortune to find and then beg my wife to let me borrow more than our mortgage to go hire legendary marketing guru, Dan Kennedy. Um, in two years, he took me from the bottom of a 6,700th advisory firm to the top 30 in the country for opening new business. So my business, my financial services practice took off. I got written about in every trade journal in the industry. My phone started ringing off the hook with advisors who wanted to do what I did. I said, Dan, what do I do? He faxed me back and said, start a marketing firm and do it for them. That was 14 years ago. I started marketdominationllc.com as myself and one advisor who I was willing to let license my stuff. Uh, 14 years later, we've served thousands and thousands and thousands of clients in every time zone on the planet. And we now have grown to an awesome team of 44 staff members. And it's been an incredible roller coaster journey. So that's the fastest version I've ever done. <laughs> Well, and that's cool because I know we're going to we're going to cover a lot of the the how to's because you said a lot of stuff there that um, I think a lot of people can relate with, you know, especially in the pandemic, you know, how how did you find the, I guess, the gumption to go and, and take such a big loan or, or like you said, yep. to hire Dan? I mean, that's that's a huge risk. What What gave you the inspiration to do that? So that was during another economic crisis. It wasn't a pandemic. It was the subprime bubble, mortgage bubble bursting and the economy falling apart. So I had, I was frustrated with the Fortune 500 sales prevention department that didn't want to let me do all the things Dan was teaching me. And when we were during the height of the subprime bubble burst, we, that company was bought out by another company. And two things happened. One um, that company was bragging about the multi-billion dollar branding campaign they had recently launched in the last year to grow the business. And I said, I raised my hand, I was a shareholder in a meeting, and I said, how much revenue did it bring in? And they said, what do you mean? I said, well, we spent $2 billion of shareholder money. Some of that is my money. 
what was our ROI? And they said, well, we have no way to measure that. You know, our logo is getting recognized in focus groups and we have anecdotal evidence of people saying, I saw your commercial, or I saw your ad in the Wall Street Journal. And I said, so you spent $2 billion as an investment firm and we don't know our return and we can't track it. And they said, yes. I said, oh my God, I got to get out of here. Um, so that combined with getting bought out by a bank and the bank starting to talk about cutting payouts, the bank starting to talk about changing the way we did business said to me, now is the perfect time to leave and start my own company and start a separate marketing company at the same time because the Fortune 500 company didn't really want me to do that. So that that was kind of the writing on the wall for me. Oh, I, I didn't realize I didn't put the math together because that's actually part of my story too, having gone through the Great Recession um, and going through a tough, tough journey. That's an even bigger risk uh, seemingly, but you got rewarded uh, amazingly well, you know, it, it, with marketing, uh, you must have some really cool secrets. Like, do you have any, like, and, and we're going to talk about, um, you know, grow your co own cult.com, but how did you start marketing for these professionals and then grow so quickly? Sure. So everything I had originally learned with Dan was before the internet, it was all print ads and direct mail. So that's what I was doing for the advisors who I was starting to let hire my marketing firm. And then obviously the internet got popular and social media came out and podcasts have had a new, new ground floor every few years when they get rediscovered. So we have, we still do print ads. We still do direct mail and we do internet and social media and digital and podcasts and all of the other things. So we never eliminated anything because it kept working. In some cases, direct mail works even better now because fewer people are doing it. So mm. we keep adding new services. We keep inventing new ways to reach our target market for our clients to generate them business. That's so amazing. I love the old school meets new school. So how did you come up with, and I'm going to share the, the link in the show notes, and I'm going to share it on the, the screen right now, because I really want to dive into that. Uh, we, uh, just before the show, I was reminding you how perfect it is. You came in a week after Matt McWilliams, the affiliate guy. It, it almost sounds like grow your own cult. There's a story there somewhere. How did you come up with that idea? It is. And it's funny, Matt and I have talked about this and had the same conversation because he does almost the back end of the front end of the affiliates, for lack of a better term, that we generate. So we're working on playing together in that department. So Grow Your Own Cult started as a financial advisor. I was taught you should get referrals from other centers of influence, like mm -hmm. accountants and attorneys. And I tried taking every one of my clients, accountants and attorneys to breakfast or lunch and buying them dinner, buying them a meal, getting to know them and asking for referrals. And it never worked. I never got a single referral because they all said, well, you're brand new. You, On average, 90% of you guys quit in five years. I'm going to wait five years. And I said, well, that doesn't help me stay for five years if you're not <laughs> going to send me any business. So that completely failed. But I knew that they had my ideal clients, families with kids who are college bound, who are affluent. I knew they had my ideal clients as their clients. And I had to figure out a way to get them to actually start sending them to me. So the short version of what happened is I had interviewed a number of, uh, of them to write a book. And I figured if I wrote a book, I would be an authority on the topic, even though I was 20 something years old and looked like I was you know, younger than that. <laughs> so uh, when I launched my first book in the financial services marketplace to consumers, it worked incredibly well. And all of these accountants and attorneys started handing out my book. Because they were saying, look at me, I'm in this book to their clients. They were bragging about themselves. They didn't realize I wrote the book. They were taking me along for the ride. Those accountants and attorneys started calling me. The consumers said, hey, my accountant told me to talk to you. That's not true. He never said that. He said, look at me. I'm awesome. I'm in this book. And the client heard, oh, well, I do want a second opinion. And this guy did hand me up. My accountant gave me this book by this guy. He must be good. And they called me. So I said, I think I'm on to something here. So I started doing it on purpose and then started doing it for other advisors. It kept working. And mm -hmm. then when podcasts got big seven, eight years ago, we said, instead of 10 or 12 interviews that it takes to make a book, let's do a podcast every week and let's air it online because now they can share it on social media. They can share it on LinkedIn. They can put it on their website. We'll get more traction. And that worked. And it worked even better. 
So we keep adding more forms of media to it. And the original origin of the idea was I would see in the beginning of internet marketing, I watch guys like Frank Kern and Jeff Walker and Evan Pagan. Like I would get 20 emails in one day from every single one of them about the other guy's launch. They all said, hey, Jeff is launching product launch formula today. Buy it through my link and you'll get these great bonuses from me. And 20 different internet gurus all said the same thing. So I said, oh my God, they have their own little cult, right? I can just picture these guys in, in Frank's mansion in, San, in California plotting out, we're going to launch Jeff this month. And next month, it'll be Mike Phil same. And next month, it'll make Ryan Dice. And we'll all make a fortune together. And I said, I want one of those. Mm. And I turned my referral sources and my financial services business into my own little cult. And then I did it in the marketing firm and launched several marketing I launched our marketing firm, literally multiple services by building my own little cult of referral partners or affiliates. Mm. And that's kind of how the grow your own cult concept created, because who doesn't want an unpaid sales force of mm -hmm. 50 evangelists literally telling people about you every single week you do a podcast episode? I'm going to promote this. I'm yep. promoting right now that I was on it. I'm in your cult now. So you may not have called it a cult, but I'm now a member of your cult. So why not put that on steroids? Why mm -hmm. not do that on purpose? And why not use that to build an army? And it, it works. I've done four podcasts today. It works every single time we do it. It works for all of our clients and it can work for the folks watching this now. I love it. And I want to give a shout out. We have a couple of my friends from Minnesota tuning in. We have Sean Waite, who's a, a coach, and Carl Olson. Uh, an affiliate marketer. So it's super, super awesome to see you guys here today. Don't forget, guys, if you have questions, this is only a 30 minute show. Um, you know, Seth has a very crazy schedule. Is, is this really your fourth podcast today? It is. <laughs> okay. And there's That's two awesome. more. I love it. I love it. I want to be like you when I grow up. So I, I can totally appreciate it. <laughs> Write me a check and we can make that happen. <laughs> So I love you. Basically, what you're talking about is um, attraction marketing at its finest and building authority through books and podcasts and speaking opportunities, also live streams if it's not a podcast. So do you have any advice? I mean, I know what I would say, but I'd love to hear what you would say when someone's wanting to build their own cult, if you will, or tribe or whatever you guys want to call it. I'd hear people call them armies. I've heard all different names. But do you have any advice on where they would begin? Is it is it to be in a book, start a podcast, uh, any of those kinds of things? No. And actually, CULT stands for something. It's an acronym. C-U-L-T all stands for something, which you can find out. If you go to growyourowncult.com, we'll talk. We have a special offer for the Healthy, Wealthy, Wise community at that site. It's 50% off the normal price for our ebook that tells you exactly how to do this. Now, no, I wouldn't start with any of that. 50% of the success or failure of your business, your marketing, whatever it is you're going to do is going to come down to your target market. So uh -huh. I would start with identifying who is your ultimate end user client, whether it's a business owner or a consumer, doesn't matter. Who are you trying to offer your product or services to? And then we'll go back one level and figure out who influences them. And those are the folks you start off by interviewing on your show. But I wouldn't create a show without knowing who do I want to interview first and who am I trying to get to? Because if you get the strategy wrong, the best show in the world, the most interesting won't work. Mm -hmm. I love it. No, that's so true. And, and I have a, a numeric question. You you said 50. Is that because there's 52 weeks in a year and you're focusing like on one person a week or why 50? Yes. Yeah, we're doing one relation, one new relationship every single week for 50 weeks. And we're assuming you're taking off Christmas and New Year's. Got it. Awesome. See, I, I'm not so dumb. <laughs> You're not at all, Lois. Cut it out. <laughs> so there's a question here from Sean. Is there a difference between a cult and a raving fan? Yeah, absolutely. Because a raving fan, think about your own personal experience. If you go to a restaurant, if you watch a movie, if you go buy something and you're happy, mm -hmm. you will tell a small number of people if you tell anybody. If you're pissed off, you're going to tell a lot more people. Negativity spreads faster. So a yeah. raving fan might say, oh, my God, I had the best steak in the world at the Buffalo Chop House. You've got to try it. But it's not measurable. I don't they're not giving out an affiliate link to the restaurant. I can't track how many people came in from that person in a cult. I am literally measuring how many calls we had, how many leads came in, how much revenue was generated. They're participating actively in the process. They're sending out whatever they're sending out that I give them that's trackable. 
So mm -hmm. I literally know which cult members are more valuable, which ones aren't, which ones are doing their jobs and sharing, which ones aren't. So yes, raving fans are nice, but you know, 80% of business owners say their number one strategy is word of mouth. That's how they grow. But if you mm -hmm. ask them, how many word of mouth clients are you getting next month? How can you get doubled if you want? They'll say, no, mm -hmm. of course not. I have no way mm -hmm. of knowing how many referrals are coming in. And no, I can't just get more. That's not scalable. A cult is mm -hmm. scalable. I love it. Yeah. Cause I would just, um, I love the ability to pay you, you pay your cult, right. For referrals, like an affiliate Absolutely. program. Well, we have, we, we do, it depends on the sophistication level of the cult member. So, and it depends on the regulations. So there are all our cult, like lawyers can't take a referral fee, for Bummer. example. So some of them just do it for free just to share it, uh, because they believe in it. Some of them will are, so the more the internet marketers all want trackable commissions in an affiliate links. Regular mm -hmm. business people don't even necessarily know what that is. So they may not even think to say, oh, I should get a cut of the revenue. They may mm -hmm. just say, yeah, I'm happy to hand out your book or I'm happy to share your podcast because it promoted them. Right so on. some are yeah. paid, some are not. It's all up. We're happy to pay any of them, but it's all up to them as to whether or not they want to or can take the money. That's awesome. And I love that because I just sent an email to one of my affiliates uh, saying, hey, I'm going to be paying you a $500 check next month inbox money. So I'm a huge fan of, of affiliate income. Um, anything else about the the ebook before I wanted to, to transition over to your your uh, experience with Kevin Harrington and the Sharpener podcast next? Sure. Yeah. The ebook is 14 bucks on Amazon. If you go to growyourowncult.com, you can get it for seven bucks. It's the best seven bucks you'll ever spend on your marketing. And it'll walk you through step-by-step -step our entire process. So you could literally do it yourself if you want to. Awesome. I love it. I love it. Awesome. And so how did you, uh, was, was this your first podcast, the Sharkpreneur, or did you have other podcasts leading up to that? And how many podcasts do you have? Okay. So no, the podcast was originally called Direct Response Marketing. I ran it for a couple of years and then I had the good fortune to kidnap Kevin Harrington, which I can tell you that story if you want. And then <laughs> when um, eventually in the fir first couple of years of my relationship with him, at one point he said, hey, what do you have that's sexy right now? In addition to all the work we were already doing for his portfolio companies, he said, what's the newest thing you're doing? And at the time, the newest thing we were doing was this model, the cult model. So I told him and he said, ooh, I want a podcast, but I don't want to do any work. He said, I'll come on your show. I'll be a co-host. We'll rebrand mm -hmm. it around the two of us. Um, and I'll do one episode a week. That's all I can do. And I, you can do as many others as you want. And the episodes that I'm on, I will market to my list and on social media and to my network. And as wow. they say on Shark Tank, I said, I'm in. <laughs> and that was like seven, eight years ago. And you said you kidnapped him. How You have to tell us that story. Sure. So I went to a, I heard he was coming to Buffalo to speak. No one ever comes to Buffalo to speak. They were having a entrepreneur's organization, the EO group that he co-founded with Michael Dell. It was like the 25th or whatever anniversary. There was a regional conference that happened to be here in Buffalo. So we, they were the host chapter. I didn't even know what EO was. So I moved the eight meetings I had that day. I paid $300 for a non-member ticket. I went, I saw him speak. And then at the back of the room, when he was signing autographs and taking selfies for his new book, Instead of doing that, when I walked up, I said, Mr. Harrington, I'm here to take you to the airport. And this was before Uber. And he said, oh, that's okay. I'm getting a cab. And I said, no, they insist I'm supposed to take you to the airport. Now I made that up. There was no they, but he didn't know that. So he said, okay, fine. Um, wait till I'm done and I'll, you can drive me to the airport. So I drove very slowly to the airport and had half an hour to pitch, which I pitched him on. Um, consulting with him for his as seen on TV company, because I said, there's 12 holes in your marketing funnel that we've identified. We can fix them. It'll up wow. your revenue 20%. He said, you know, we do hundreds of millions of dollars a year, right? You really think you can, uh, you know, you're going to get me an extra 20 million, 30 million, $40 million. Um, and I gulped and sweated a little bit. It said, sure. <laughs> um, and so he said, okay, send me what you want to send me. Here's my address. Here's my, you know, send me what you want to send me. So I sent him, which we could do a whole separate interview on a shock and awe box, which he got his secretary delivered in the middle of a board meeting and interrupted him to show it to him. 
And wow. he he called me right after and said, okay, you got my attention. Um, that started our consulting relationship. Then he started hiring us to do work for the companies he's invests in. And he's been a bit, we've started two companies together. Um, so it's been an amazing relationship. So I have to ask, so after you gulped in that next year, what was the the amount? If you don't mind me asking and you can share, do you remember what the amount was that you you helped him create as a result of his 12 holes in his marketing? Yes. So I'm not allowed to publicly disclose that number because he <laughs> sold the company. Okay. Um, but it was significant enough that he hi started hiring us for a lot of his other portfolio companies. Um, there were times that he decided whether or not to buy it. He called me for two companies. He said, I'm thinking about buying this company. Can you market this? Which was amazing that he asked me if I could work our magic on it. And he's like, I'm not going to do it if we can't get you guys to do your stuff. I was like, holy, that's amazing. I, <laughs> of course we can. Um, so it's been incredible. That's awesome. Well, I, if you can never help get Kevin on this show, I'll be uh, forever in your debt. <laughs> Um, with the, the grow your own cult, I, I know that, well, first of all, I want to remind you guys, um, we have less than 10 minutes left. So if anybody has questions, please, please comment below. Um, I know Sean Waite just said he bought your book. He awesome. says, Thanks, thank, Sean. thank goodness, no poison Kool-Aid. That's hilarious. So yeah, I was, I was curious and I am going to be purchasing your book as well. I, I didn't know that the cult was an acronym. So that's 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 really cool. I can't wait to get that, guys. So remember, get the book and go to growyourowncult.com. It's an uh, ebook, ebook, just so you know. It's a PDF download. It is not a physical well, the physical you it's not a phys you're not getting the physical book for seven bucks on our site. Yeah, you can you can consume it. It's 37 it. pages. You don't need a physical, you can print it. Consume it over the weekend type of thing. So for because I love business by referral, I love the idea of growing your own cult. For someone who's never done that, like I, I, I was old school. I was in real estate too. Like in similar idea was yeah, you wine and dine, you take people out, you ask them for referrals, you do gifts, you do things like that. If someone's in this pandemic on a shoestring budget, and I know again, get the ebook. Uh, but what would be like a quick and easy way to develop those referral partner relationships quickly? Well, if you're doing the podcast yourself, the podcast is the first step. It's the first part of the long uh, process to convert those into profitable relationships. So theoretically, if you did your podcast yourself, I mean, you could do one on StreamYard technically for next to nothing. You could mm -hmm. start that process now with um, and it'd be light years ahead of my first show. My first 15 episodes were on freeconferencecall.com. And you literally heard the phone ring and the, hey, Mr. Jones, thanks so much for doing this. Like we didn't edit a thing. The production quality was below awful. Like the first of our couple hundred reviews say that it says the production is non-existent. If you can get past that, there's good content here. So it is so much easier now. The barrier to entry is zero. You yeah. could sign up for StreamYard for 10 or 20 or whatever bucks and start a show mm -hmm. with nothing. And you could make some money and then do the rest later. Yeah, and I'm I'm uh, I'm just gonna throw this out there, guys. Since launching my podcast last summer, I've been able to create six figures and in income. So I I'm, I'm so glad to hear you reaffirming um, that. And I think podcasting doesn't have to be complicated, right? You don't have to have all the bells and whistles. You can start super super low cost. No, back in my day, all I had was a phone, and it was a recorded audio. There was no video. There was no social media. Now I'm gonna sound like an old man, but anyway. Well, that's how I hired uh, my first coach just just before the pandemic was listening to a similar similar podcast with no intro, no outro, call to action at the end. It was 15 minutes. I was like, oh, my gosh, I need to. I, I need to. That. Yeah. 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 hundred percent. Um, what other projects are you working on right now or, or anything else that our, our audience, again, just to remind you, most people in this audience are coaches, speakers, authors, podcasters, or want to be podcasters and holistic healers. Do you have any other um, marketing advice or any other sage wisdom, especially in this pandemic, especially if someone maybe can't do the direct marketing and, and they don't have the budget for all those other things? Any other words of wisdom? I mean, we could talk for days. So yes, of course, we've got other words of wisdom. You got to narrow it down a little bit. I would say my pandemic advice is it hit our business too. I had three webinars in March of 2020 with affiliate partners that flopped. I had never struck out before and we mm -hmm. always sold something. And I had three webinars in a row where we sold nothing. And it took me, I was a little thick headed. It took me three webinars to realize we got to change something. 
And we decided we had to offer lower price service offerings and make it not about growth, but about the Corona survival guide. Or we had to make it about how to keep your business during COVID. And then once we pivoted and offered a different branded lower end serve lower price service, everything started working again. So I would say fewer people are marketing right now. A lot of people hid under their desks and didn't talk to anybody and hunkered down and scaled back. And I would say, this is awesome. This is the perfect time when you have less competition is when you want to spend more money and invest more in your marketing to buy market share from all those people who are scared. Awesome. Yeah. Yes. Yes, Sean. A, as soon as you order the book, someone will physically show up to your house <laughs> and try and convert you into our cult. That's exactly what happens. <laughs> Maybe you'll, I forget what you call it, a shock awe box. Maybe you'll be getting a, some kind of shocking, amazing uh, box. And on your website, I just want to bring this up because I use this terminology, but not everybody maybe understands it. Um, a COI. Can you t- explain to the audience, what is a COI that you want promoting for you every week? Center of influence. So somebody who serves the same market you do, I call it co opetition An accountant doesn't compete with the financial advisor. They don't do the same thing. But they could co-opetition together. They could collaborate because the accountant sending their clients to my college financial aid company doesn't hurt the accountant. It hopefully generates more goodwill and more business for both of us. Me sending my clients to the accountant, I'm not a tax accountant, helps him so we can work together Mm -hmm. and a rising tide lifts all boats. Amen to that. Yeah, I have my own. For those of you guys, if you've never heard of my affiliate program, I just want to give a huge quick shout out for that. Um, go to kofiaffiliate.com and you'll see kind of a uh, sense, really not kind of, really what, what Seth is talking about today and what Matt talked about uh, last week. I do have uh, one more question for you that I, I close with. And and then anything else, I know we could be on here for days, um, but if there's anything else that you'd like to, to end with as like a, a juicy nugget or tip. Um, But before we get to that point, I just want to remind you guys to go to growyourowncult.com and get that ebook if you're tuning in um, live or on the replay. Also comment below um, as, as as he shared, he's on my podcast today. He's also inside of my Facebook community. And that's why if you are listening on iTunes later on YouTube, if you're not already in Healthy and Wealthy and Wise Facebook community, please join as soon as you possibly can so you can get some questions answered and and meet people, amazing people like Seth. So my last question that I always ask everyone, it goes with the the title of my podcast and not everyone knows the story about why I called it that. Um, I oftentimes will share it and sprinkle it in, but it has a lot of meaning to me. And I always ask every single guest this question. So Seth, when you hear the phrase healthy and wealthy and wise, what does that mean for you in your life? That's a great question. So if you don't have your health, the wealthy and wise don't necessarily matter. You can't spend the money. If you're not feeling well, you can't spend it the same way. And um, having wealth can help make you healthy uh, because you can buy access to care and products and services that you couldn't otherwise without it. And I think being wise is what funds both of them. Wise will make you wealthy. Wise can make you healthy. Um, I interviewed the guy, the founder of the healthy fats movement and the guy who originally figured out flaxseed oil um, the other day on my podcast. And I learned a ton about biochemistry and foods and all this amazing oh. stuff. So I think you're right on the money. And I think it's in, that you're trying to teach people the trifecta of healthy, wealthy and wise. Awesome. Yeah, that's it really hit me hard in the recession. I, I lost my health, my wealth. And, and I at the same time, I learned, thankfully, a lot of wisdom um, by pivoting. Um, I guess as we we wrap it up here, because uh, I wanted to make sure you got that answer in, is there one other bit of advice that was like really on your heart that that really stands out to that you'd want to share with our crowd today about building their own cult besides, of course, getting your book? Sure. So my favorite quote about this is uh, from Dr. Corey Malnikoff, a chiropractic entrepreneur um, who's growing a super fast growing ch- uh business of chiropractic clinics all over the country. And he says, who you are affects how well what you do works. So I would say before, I would say you got to work on yourself. You got to do the healthy, wealthy personal development program, Mm -hmm. because I find our business takes exponential leaps forward when I grow as a person, husband, father, thought leader, or entrepreneur. So make sure you're working on yourself along the way. And I don't know if a better place to do that than the healthy, wealthy, and wise community. 
<laughs> I love it. Thank you so much, Seth. Again, guys, if you even tune in later and you want to do hashtag replay and, and throw out some questions there, um, we'd love to love to support you. And of course, I, I love your, your website too. Just those, asking those questions, guys. Imagine this. What if you could get others to grow your business for you? Yeah, what don't if you grow had it yourself. A, what if you had a new COI, Center of Influence, promoting your business? Some people have maybe never heard of that. So just reminding you. So I think um, your topic is so timely. It's such a, I think no one succeeds alone before and now, especially in the pandemic. So guys, get his ebook and please hit the share button. Uh, one last reminder to make sure you share this with other people who could use this inspiration in their business and in their lives. So until next time, next week, guys, we have Tanya James as our next week guest on Friday. She's an alchemist. And we're going to be talking about more of a spiritual way of working through your business challenges. And we're super excited to have her on. So until next time, guys, here's to your best health, your best wealth, and your best wisdom. Bye-bye for now. Hey, guys, thank you so much for listening to this episode. If you enjoyed this Please subscribe, refer a friend, and please drop me a rating or a review. If you do that, I'll reward you with a free 20-minute free coaching session on crafting your journey to your best self. Reach out to me at lois at loiskofi.com to claim your 20-minute slot. Until next time, be healthy, wealthy, and wise.